Well, welcome back to Oslo for the finale of this seventh round of the Biathlon World Cup. It's going to be hard to match the action from Val de Fiemme and uh, that 50 kilometre, what a race it was. We'll uh, have a chat about that as uh, we go through our programme and thanks to David and Mike for all the coverage down in Val de Fiemme. Well, uh, the city of Oslo, always uh, a great host nation when it comes to sporting events, particularly the winter, and that's probably because they have so much success. And uh, they've had a huge amount of success this season in just about every sport you can think of. Nice to see their neighbours doing well. Yeah, the, um, the 50k result now down in Val de Femme, that was just amazing to see the Swedish coming through there and or say coming through, he kicked it. 20 kilometers into the race and managed to hold on to the rest of it the whole yeah, way through. Even if even if Olsen hadn't won, I think he would have given uh, the whole of Sweden and particularly his family uh, a great afternoon's entertainment. And it's uh, the sort of event that uh, the rumor goes out that uh, their man is doing well and that the TV figures just go up and up and up. And I wouldn't be surprised if all 8 million of uh, Sweden's uh, home nationals were watching that one. Well, let's uh, focus on the last race here in uh, Oslo. It's the men's 15 kilometer mass start. Top 30, essentially the top 30 in the world, although a group of them down the bottom of the start order uh, are those who've done well here in Oslo over the weekend. So the four athletes are all here. All the men fighting for honors in the World Cup standings are here. The only man missing is Emil Hegler Svensson of Norway. Yeah, he's been uh, sick coming into the uh, Home and Column World Cup. And he, we all, all thought that he would be starting now on Sunday, but um, he's been given the, not the go-ahead to start, so we can only say that he's going to save himself for the final two World Cups, which so is a may, shame. Yeah, so maybe the Norwegians will have to rely on this man to uh, take away the spoils. Ole Einar Bjorndalen in action today, and the Russians with uh, Alexander Lokhinov, uh, new name, only 21. My goodness, what an introduction he's had to World Cup action. And with uh, the rest of the Russian team away training in Sochi to try and make an impression next week, I think he'll have found his way into the team. It's amazing. Junior World Champion. This is his second World Cup and he managed to pull off a third position finish. So the sun is out, uh, the crowd uh, still getting bigger and bigger, and we're just uh, a couple of minutes away from the start of the men's mass start. Stay with us. We'll be back right after this. Just under five minutes before the start of the men's mass start here in Oslo. There's the uh, Park Hotel where most of the athletes are staying. Very comfortable indeed. And uh, they do well to accommodate uh, the athletes. The wind going up to four kilometers, uh, four meters per second, I should say, which is what? That's about uh, 12, 13 kilometers per hour. It's not a gale, but it's enough to give the athletes problems, particularly if it's not stable. Now, these tracks you know pretty well, Mark. Yeah, this course is, um, you see, the, the track goes up, climbs quite heavy, goes round to the left and swings fast back down again. So you end up coming past the church and back in and then sweeping around the back of the stadium and then down into the range. So that's the outline of the course. So I always think it would be nice to see the profile so we can see just how much climbing, how much descending there is to be done. Uh, essentially, the, the hardest bit of the climb is the first part of the course, and then there's a climb uh, that runs up to within 800 metres of the range, and uh, that one often decides the race. Well, here are the start numbers, and they all go off together in the mass start, obviously, rather than the pursuit where they're separated by the margin from the sprint. Uh, I think there'll be lots of discussion as to whether those margins should be cut. Oleana Bjorndalen goes number 14. Burr, his teammate, goes number 15. So they're side by side on the start sheet. Legelica Canada, who won earlier on in the season, uh, in fact, the very first uh, race of the season, the sprint uh, in Ustersund. That was the second race, actually, because they start the season now with an individual, the 20 kilometer, which always seems rather bizarre as it's the longest race. But uh, they like to get them out of the way not so many individuals on the program as they used to be and uh, i can tell you what that uh, a lot of these athletes have been in the clubhouse watching the action from the world championships down in valley Fiemme, particularly bjorn ferry and uh, freddie lindstrom who of course uh, are swedish and they would have taken a lot of heart from that performance and uh, when you see one of your own countrymen putting in such a fantastic fighting effort uh, i guess you can't help but work a little bit harder yourself in your race yeah, this would have boosted those guys. They will be on fire on the start line. Uh, it, they're going to be trying to make it a, another successful race for Sweden. And uh, let's hope we can uh, see them up in the, the medals. 
Now, the World Championship was won by Tevia Burr. That was a, a fantastic race with some extraordinary tactics from Martin Forcada, sprinting into the range on the first, the second, and the fourth shoot. Uh, it worked okay for the first two. It backfired on the fourth shoot. There he is, wearing number one. And after yesterday's performance in the pursuit, in, he's now red-hot favourite to take the win in this mass start. And uh, Martin Forcada actually gave the king of Norway a set of his skis yesterday as uh, he, he promised that if he was going to win he was going to give the, the king a prize so not his best skis but some pretty good skis well the king uh, will be happy but the king can't do anything about the result of this race although he will be handing out the prizes at the end of the day is this man going to take control like he did in the mass start in Rupe holding uh, just after the Christmas break that was perhaps for me that was uh, the, the most dominant performance we've seen all season it didn't work in the World Championships because he had the company of some uh, some skiers who were on slightly better form than the others were. Freddie Lindstrom, the best of the Swedes now. He's still a young man, only 24, and uh, I, I've been really impressed with him this year. I hope he has a good run. Birnbacker, who won the first mass start of the season, that was in uh, Pukuka. And I should tell you that uh, all the winners of the three mass starts we've had so far have shot 20 out of 20. I wonder if that's what you're going to have to do today. Alexi Berth, wearing number six. Uh, he goes for France, obviously. He's 27 years old tomorrow. So happy birthday in advance to him. Number seven, Simonada, shooting left-handed. And uh, he'll have to hope that he can uh, hit, hit the target shooting as fast as he does. Bertrix and then Tim Burke of USA after his medal in the World Championships in the individual, a silver medal there. Uh, he's uh, somewhat lost form. I wonder whether he's lost his focus having uh, achieved what was a remarkable uh, effort. The first American for 26 years to take a medal at a World Championships. Top 10 seeds on the front row. 30 men in all lined up. Number 30, Danny Burm coming in as one of the reserves. Legelik and Volkov also getting the shout with uh, Labilund, Svensson and Shvetkov of Russia deciding not to race. A little bit of a, a scrappy start uh, and that comes from having a long hold. They're eager to get away. Watch out for Fukada who'll try and dominate but it looks as though it's his teammate Alexis Berth who's uh, started the fastest and he's got himself a lead of three or four metres and in doing so Mark he can probably control the pace up the climb. Yeah not only control the pace but it's critical to fight for a good position on the first hill. You do not want to be getting held back from the first moment you're out of the blocks. Teddy Bo, of course, the world champion, and uh, he won two successive races, winning the sprint up here as well. But I know, uh, I know he's starting to feel the pace, and we spoke about it during the women's race. Mark, how important it is to get the full summer's training in. Well, Terry Bow, he missed the first half of the season. He missed the last half of the summer with the illness that we talked about. Uh, are you surprised that he's starting to feel the fatigue? No, it's, it's very predictable now. He's, he's missing some vital summer base training. And uh, I'm, I imagine he's just uh, happy that he's holding on to this form he's got at the moment. Well, we'll see how Teddy Bo gets on. He's uh, got a tough act to follow after Tora Berger's performance uh, early on. The Norwegians have four racing. Austria have four. The French, led by Martin Fokada, have four. His brother also in action. And Berth, we've seen. Bethlix, we've also seen on the start line. The Russians with three. And uh, all in all, how many nations have we got? 12, 13? 13 nations. 13 nations represented today. And uh, that shows you what a healthy state biathlon is. At the back at the moment, is uh, Austria number 29 that's Danny Mesetich who's uh, pretty good in the head-to-heads you see the back of the pack there they just literally come to a standstill so it's so critical to get up there and fight their places so you don't come to a stop yeah the concertina effect uh, fairly dramatic on the first lap but when they come to the first shoot we could lose we should in these conditions we should only lose at the most half the field uh, hopefully we only lose a third of the athletes 10 dropping back with missed targets in the women's 17 went clear that's a big effort coming in from number 13 uh, or is that number 15 I think it would tell you both trying to find his way into a decent position early on in Bjorndal and also doing the same these guys know the course backwards inside out they know that they're gonna make any places in this race they're gonna do slight shortcuts here and there just to gain a new place yeah, and the place to do it is to is is not to just attack on the steepest hill. Attack before you reach the hill, uh, because everyone else will slow down as they hit it, and you can gain three or four places with relatively little effort. 
And the master of it all, of course, is Petter Nortug, but he wasn't on best form down in the uh, cross-country 50k today. Once again, left it, letting the leaders get too far clear. Number five, uh, Dominic Landertinger. He'll hope he shoots a bit better than he did yesterday. 0 4 one, zero. So five targets missed by Landertinger, and his race coming to a, 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 a halt, really, after that second prone shoot. You see that the highest point of the course just then, looking down, and that's a fast downhill sweep. They're going to be able to get some recovery on the way, but at the same time, they've got to prepare for the next blast. Good downhill section from Terry Bo to put him into the uh, lead. And uh, he looks very like Svensson on his skis. There's Bjorn Dahlen on the outside of the turn. For Russia, number 26, that's Alexander Loginov. We're fascinated to see how he gets on. 21 years, as we said, comes from Saratov. And he's, uh, his first two World Cups, he's had a fifth and a third. If he keeps that sequence going, he'll be the champion today. But uh, I think that's unlikely, especially with the likes of Burt and Fulcada at the front. Now, in the World Championships, Martin Fulcada, who you can see in your picture there with the yellow bib on, he attacked the range on the first, the second and the fourth shoot. Uh, it didn't work, but I, I just wonder what your take on wh why he might have done that rather than just cruising into the range like everyone else. Yeah, it could be a couple of things. He, it could be his game plan. That he's just going to try that. It's going to work for him. Or um, more likely, he's trying to psych out the rest of the athletes that are behind him and see maybe who goes with him and just to cause a bit of a, a break in their mental approach to the shooting range. Yeah, I think the latter is uh, more likely because he, he was he was on very good form. I think it actually decided that it was very difficult to gain time on the tracks in Novo Mesto. There, there was, it was steep up or fast down. Uh, and strangely enough, it's quite difficult to make time in those conditions. It's when it goes from steep to flat to steep and you get the technical turns. It's the strong athletes who can accelerate over the top of the hills. The strong athletes who can attack the bottom. Now, I think that's Bjorn Dahlen being pushed out of the side. Uh, was he more than two metres away from the track? He was very lucky that's what he was he nearly hit that one of the uh the signs on the side there and that would have thrown him right out of the race so yeah, good, uh, foot, good footwork here yeah. fancy footwork <laughs> very good footwork but if he gets disqualified for that there'll be an absolute uproar it gives a good indication as well as how fast these guys are coming down the hill they are rapid speed so one slight mistake here not only could you take yourself out but you might take half of the field out as well yeah i think they'll measure that and it will come up at one meter 99 <laughs> <laughs> it was perilously